What's going on guys? Thank you for tuning into this episode of Twin Finance. This is Jackson and today we're going to go over a quick analysis I did of Delta Airlines stock and why I believe that it's in an undervalued security. As you can see in this current picture, it's just a quick snapshot of their uh, stock profile on the Apple app. Uh, you can see there's a 12 price earnings on them, 2.45% dividend yield. Uh, today they had more volume than their average. Uh, their share price right now is right around $58. Market cap sitting around $40 billion and $40.5 billion. So yeah, I'm going to go over why I believe this stock is undervalued. I did a little analysis on Microsoft Word online. I just typed it out. So yeah, I'm going to just go over that real fast. So as you can see here, the their current ass assets over current liabilities is 42%. This number seems really low at first, but once you start to analyze across the sector, you start to see that, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is quite average for the for the airline sector. And um, I I listed here too that um the 20 the re the reported um assets here the current ass I mean sorry the current liabilities reported here is kind of like an odd fluke year for Delta. They had uh, they have two longer term debts that are maturing this year. So obviously they were moved to current liabilities on the balance sheet. So that's what raised that number. I looked forward into previous I mean into future years upcoming, and they have all their debts structured as of right now to mature like you know only one in a year. So like this this uh ratio should correct itself in the coming year. This shouldn't be of concern. Um, I believe you know Delta's doing the right things with their cash flow and their management. They really want their uh, they're looking forward to you know getting more free cash flow uh, freed up, and then they're they're trying to pay down long term debts. That's the goal of the management team. So yeah, this current uh, liabilities ratio, assets over liabilities ratio, I'm not too concerned about, guys. The next thing we got here, we had revenue growth over three years, and I think it was pretty flat. And this is revenue growth over 10 years, and it's looking around 82%, guys. So, you know, that's a considerable growth um, in 10 years. That's, you know, their business is, it's been doing pretty strong. Delta's been, you know, getting out to new markets, serving new clients, driving in more people. So, you know, their revenue's been going up quite well. Uh, their net income growth for for three years is down 26%. If you look across the sector, as it did with um, the previous example, you start to see that a lot of airlines um, have been going down uh, in net income over the past three years. So uh, they're not doing um, quite too bad. I believe Southwest Airlines did quite well over the last three years. You know, they increased their earnings by a bit, but um, their income growth, it's it's not of con concern to me. As you can see, five-year net income growth is 41.5%, so that's a good factor. Um, their payout ratio, this is the payout ratio on their dividend. So their payout ratio on their dividend is uh, 25% this year. And if they beat earnings, or not if they beat, if they match their earnings expectations for the year, it's only going to be 21%. So that's a good payout ratio, guys. They're not, you know, under a quarter of their income is going towards dividend, which means that dividend's pretty secure. It's not going nowhere. Um, they're going to be able to pay that as, you know, as long as the economy stays well and they're, you know, they're making good profits, that dividend isn't going anywhere. If it stays around that 21% range, guys, you can definitely expect, uh, a, another raise in their dividend as, as they have done for the last few years, Delta has been raising their dividend every year, which is another strong factor. That's another goal of their management team is to return more money to investors. They introduced their dividend not too long ago, and they've been trying to increase that as that's become more of a focus, and that's where the, the point that they're at in their business. Um, as you can see here, it says their co-brand partnership with American Express is expected to go from $3 billion to $4 billion by 2020 in, in revenue. So that's good. Um, you know, they got that partnership with American Express. Yeah, that's another big company. So, you know, they're getting out there. They're getting more stuff. Um, yeah, so that's that's good. In this upcoming picture here, we have we have 18 shares outstanding reduction since 2010. So since 2010, Delta's bought back 18% of their shares outstanding. That's good. You know, they're buying back shares. They're, they're going to raise that demand, right, guys? So say, you know, the market trades a certain amount of shares, and then all of a sudden there's, there's less... There's less shares on the market available. You know that's going to raise the price. People want to get equity in that in that company. Now there's less shares for them to buy. That's also going to raise the price. Share buybacks is a good way to give back to your investors indirectly. 
um, it just said, all the, by all the three rating agencies, the, they have investment grade rating because they've reduced their, their debt and their, their goal is to continue to reduce their debt more. So that's, that's another plus. Um, as I mentioned, long-term goal to increase cash flow further, pay down debt, buy shares, pay out dividends, yada, yada. Oil prices, obviously for airlines, guys, oil prices can affect the business pretty drastically. So I wanted to look into that, obviously, to see, you know, what's the forecast on that and how could that affect your business? Uh, basically, the gist of it is oil prices, if they're expected to go anywhere in a drastic direction, they're only going to go drastically down, not drastically up. Um, that's what the most an- analysts are saying and stuff like that. But they believe that they'll just see a slight increase over the next year, year and a half, guys. They don't expect uh, any big movements in oil. It's a possibility, obviously, but analysts don't expect it. Um yeah, so if it's a if it's a slow if it's a slow increase, that's fine for Delta. They'll be able to pass that cost off in, uh, to customers. Obviously, once you know, the once they start to say okay, oil prices are rising, you know, now they just raise their prices. Let's say flights are being booked two months out, then they just raise the price of those flights two months out accordingly, right? They're able to pass that cost off pretty rapidly to customers, which is good. As I mentioned, you know, a drastic price increase in oil prices could hurt the business, obviously, because say, you know, people are buying tickets two, three months out. Now, all of a sudden, oil prices shoot way up. You know, they're not making profit on those tickets anymore because they already sold them at that existing price. Now, the, the, the price to actually carry out those flights because oil prices went way up is, is above what they paid for those tickets. So now they're losing money. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that's not bad. Another point that I listed is the Delta Pilot Union. Um, that's about, like, I think it's around 20% of their workforce. Um, they are unionized and their contract is coming due next year. So, I mean, that could be a problem. I wanted to list that just in case, you know, case if those negotiations don't do well, the pilots are, the pilots are allowed to strike and obviously that'd be detrimental to the business. Obviously that's kind of just an underlying factor, you know, that might not be of too importance. Like I'm sure they'll be able to work it out with their employees, but you know, you always just want to keep that in the back of your mind just in case. Um, the last bullet point that I listed is, so they have a 49% stake in Aeromexico. And if you go look at Aeromexico, you know, they've been showing uh, good signs of, of growth and they're, you know, they're, they're broadening their, uh, their passenger, their passengers traveled, uh, and stuff like that. They're getting into some new markets. So that, that's another uh, good aspect about the business. They also have a 10% stake in Air Francis. I mean, not Air Francis, sorry guys, Air France, and they've been doing uh, quite well also, so, you know, that's a, some of their subsidies there, and, that, and that's not too bad, guys, so you just, they're getting out there. Uh, another point that I didn't mention is Delta has, uh, in in the last year, they invested over $2 billion into broadening their, their market and the markets that they can tap into too, so, you know, Delta is, they're always looking to expand, and just another thing that I didn't list here is, is about their management team, guys. I believe Delta's management team, you know, they got their heads in the right direction. They're thinking, they're putting the customer first. I flew Delta when I went to Brazil, and I liked their service. I liked the way they treat their customers. The 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 product is there, guys, for sure. The product is, is uh, they got some good features and some good luxuries for their, their passengers, and they treat them well. So I just, I believe this is a good business model. I think they're, they got good growth prospects ahead of them. Um, they have, their stock price has rebounded, uh, I think over 12, 13% in the last like couple months here, but, um, you've been pretty volatile over the last couple of years, but yeah, I believe this stock maybe is not the, the best, like super long-term buy. Like if like some people just say, I'll oh, buy a stock and hold it the rest of your life. I'm not going to say that about this company, but I believe right now, you know, cause with airlines and stuff like that, like I said, oil, gas prices, you never know what's going on there. But I definitely believe this stock, this stock right now is undervalued. And if you were to buy it, you know, within, you know, the next year or two or whatever, you definitely see some good returns out of it. So that's just my two cents on this stock, guys. If you have any other comments that you want to add to it or just leave them in the comment section below. If you disagree with me, hey, you know, I'm also always open for your guys' interpretations of that too. So, yeah, thank you for watching this video, guys, and have a great day.